Hi guys, I'm Raval. Welcome back to this final video in the Solid Principle series. Today we're going to be discussing dependency inversion. So once again, here are the five solid principles. You should really know them by now. Feel free to skip ahead, but if you don't want to go through it one last time with me, then let's go. S for single responsibility, O for open close, L for Liskov substitution, I for interface segregation, D for dependency inversion. So what is the dependency inversion principle? Well, it states that high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules. So what does this principle actually mean? Don't confuse this principle with dependency injection. Dependency injection is not the same as this principle, but it does allow us to follow this principle. That's very important, guys. So let's define high-level code to you. High-level code is actually not concerned with the details, but low-level code is concerned with the details. That will become more apparent when you look at an example in just a minute. But just remember that this principle is actually saying that both should depend on abstractions. So why should we follow this principle? Well, it allows us to decouple our code. Okay, guys, so let's take a look at the dependency inversion principle using code. So I decided to go with the Pokemon example once again, since it worked so well in the last video, I thought it would be good to continue using it. So let's take a look at our class Ash. Once again, we have the I choose you method. And if we just open that up, it has Pokemon do battle. And then just a string saying Pokemon pop bravely, etc, etc. We then look at our Charmander class which has three methods, attack, return to Pokeball, and battle. So here is a good example of high-level and low-level code. If we take a look at our I choose you function, we just have Pokemon do battle. It's not concerned with how a Pokemon does battle, like does it attack, how it attacks. All it wants to do is to say Pokemon do battle, that's it. So this is a good example of high-level code. We then have a class Charmander, which has attack, return to Pokeball, and battle. So this is how it says how Pokemon does battle. It also says how it attacks, how it returns to a Pokeball. And this is a good example of low-level code. So what we want to achieve with this principle, dependency inversion, is we do not want our high-level code depending on our low level code. So what we do is we code to an interface. So we have Pokemon battle interface up here, which has attack, battle, and return to Pokeball. We have a class Charmander that implements this contract or uh, implements this interface. And we also have our class of Ash uh, dependent on an instance of the Pokemon battle interface. So now, what these two classes are doing is they are now dependent on this interface here. But that now means we have class Charmander. So we you know we have attack, return to Pokeball in battle. But that means we can have another class with a different Pokemon that attacks differently, that does battle differently. So this is how we need to be coding. It uh, prevents coupling. It allows us to decouple our code. And also, if we had to make a change here or add another sort of uh, implementation of the Pokemon Battle interface, it doesn't affect our high-level code. So that is how you would implement the dependency inversion principle. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has cleared up everything you need to know about solid principles. I hope you really enjoyed the series. And thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below.